Windows 11 has arrived. In this series, we'll take a look at the key features that have changed and find out why. Right away, you'll notice that the Start menu is now in the middle. No, not like a Mac. Apple didn't invent the middle too. It takes a bit of rewiring to get used to. It's not a major change. Why did it need to be on the left anyway? Well, you'll see why when we take a look at the history of the Start menu. But front and center, that makes sense. Up front, there is a list of pinned apps. You can also pin your favorite websites and folders here, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Click on All Apps to see a full list of apps that are installed on your device. In Windows 11, you can install apps the old-fashioned way with an executable or an installer file from the Microsoft Store or via your web browser with a progressive web app. Soon, you'll even be able to install Android apps on Windows 11 through the Amazon Store, and they'll all show up here in the list of all apps. And they can be pinned to your Start menu too. Underneath your pinned apps, folders, and websites is Recommended. This area shows you your recently accessed files and newly downloaded apps. In some ways, it replaces the timeline feature of Windows 10, although there is no web history here. Unlike Windows 10, you can't organize these apps into groups. You can rearrange icons. Dragging and dropping is the best way to put them into the place that you want them. You can only see 18 apps here at once, but you can have several pages of these icons. It's best to keep it to just one concise screen, showing you just the apps that you need to have within easy reach. The rest will still be listed under All Apps. You can't resize the Start menu on Windows 11, so that's going to force you to keep this space tidy. Do you really need to have more than 18 apps within reach? For most people, probably not. The new Start menu works great with keyboard, mouse, touch, and pen. Pin apps to the Start menu by right-clicking on them in the All Apps list. Select Pin to Start. You can still pin apps to your taskbar too, but for clarity, it's best to only pin the apps that you have open all the time to your taskbar, leaving the space available for other apps. Unpin the apps that you don't need from the Start menu by right-clicking on them and selecting Unpin. This is one of the most important things that you should do as soon as you update to Windows 11 in order to make this space as useful as possible. In the Microsoft Edge browser, you can pin a website to your Start menu like this. Click on the three-dot menu, More Tools, and Pin to Start. The link will show up on your Start menu, and clicking on it will open it in your default browser. Now, this is not some exclusive Microsoft feature, by the way. Google could easily implement this in Chrome, but they probably won't, so you'll need to use Edge for this. It's better anyway, so if you're using Chrome, we'll leave a link to our video on why you should switch to Microsoft Edge below. You can also customize your apps list with shortcuts to your most frequently used folders from the File Explorer. Open the File Explorer and find the folder that you use most often. It's probably right there in your frequently used folders list. Right click on it and go to Show More Options and Pin to Start. We'll see that the original idea behind the Start menu 35 years ago was to make apps and files easier to find. So make sure that it's doing its job for you in Windows 11. Today, the Start menu can be a dashboard that pops up right over the top of any programs that you have open, giving you access to what you need fast. If you're still fishing around in a sea of icons on your desktop, it's time to retrain yourself and adapt to the new Start menu, which is a much more focused and efficient way of finding things. There is a search box at the top of the new Start menu, but as with every version of Windows since Vista, you can immediately search from the Start menu by typing something. For example, Excel. You don't have to click in the text box first, just open Start and type away. Typing on the Start menu automatically switches to search mode, and you'll see Excel show up in the list of results. So if you find yourself clicking on all apps and hunting through the list, why not make the computer do the work for you? Just type the name of the thing that you're looking for, and it will show up. Windows Search can even look for documents, emails, settings, and much more. Live tiles are gone in Windows 11. Icons on the Start menu are now just icons. They don't move and change, which makes it much less distracting and easier to find things. You'll find your profile icon in the bottom left, giving you easy access to your account settings, lock, and sign out. And the power button is on the bottom right. But there is much more that you can do with this space. Let's open up the Settings app and go to Personalization. Then click on Start. Actually, a much faster way to get here would have been to tap on the Start menu and to type Start. You'll find Start settings right there in the search results, which will take you directly to this page. 
One of the things that is missing from the old start menu is a link to the settings app. You might also want to link to your documents, downloads or pictures folders too. So here under folders, you can toggle on these options and they'll appear on the start menu alongside of your power button. Very handy. I've been using Windows 11 for many months now and the new start menu has taken a little bit of getting used to. Over time though, I've come to appreciate its simplicity. It's far less distracting than the Windows 8 full screen approach. And the restrictions have forced me to become a little bit more efficient with the space. However, I do believe that Microsoft will continue to refine and enhance the new start menu, and especially the new widget space that we'll talk about in an upcoming video. It might be a while before I can truly say that this is a complete improvement over the Windows 10 start menu, at least for me. Controversially, Windows 11 does not allow you to move the taskbar. In previous versions of Windows, you could dock the taskbar to the top, bottom, left or right, but in Windows 11, it's stuck at the bottom. And we're not sure why that is, but we can't see any reason that it won't come back in a future update. So why is the start menu such a hot button issue? Let's take a quick look at the history of the Windows start menu to find out how we got here. Before the start menu existed, Windows 3.1 worked kind of like an iPad. There were a bunch of icons on the desktop and you could put them into folders. That was about it. The start button, menu and taskbar were introduced in Windows 95. There was a very expensive launch event and some of the most awkward footage you can find on the internet, Bill Gates and Steve Barmer danced on stage to the Rolling Stones song, Start Me Up. The sitcom Friends was just finding its fame at the time. So there was even an instructional video with Jennifer Aniston and Matthew Perry on how to use Windows 95. That of course came on a VHS tape. The start menu was built as a much simpler way to find things in Windows. It was a jumping off point where you could find all of your programs in a list. Documents, help, search and settings there too. And it all started in the bottom left corner with the start button that appeared on the brand new taskbar. Elements that we still recognize in Windows today. It was in the bottom left corner so that the menus could unfold left to right in line with the English language reading style. Things stayed pretty much the same in Windows 98, ME and Windows 2000. When Windows XP shipped, the familiar Windows icon turned green and got some curves. In Windows Vista, the word start disappeared as pretty much everyone knew by now what it was. But Windows XP changed the familiar layout of start slightly with a space for favorite and recently used apps on the left. On the right side, a new option called Connect showed up so that you could dial up the internet. Windows Vista added the powerful search box right to the start menu, making it easier to find settings, programs and documents right across your computer. In Vista, the start menu stopped being an ever expanding list of folders and stayed within its own space. Windows 7 followed the same theme. But it all came to a head in Windows 8 when the whole start menu paradigm was thrown out of the window. The start menu became the start screen. Apps became tiles rather than icons. And the icons had live tiles, moving, changing elements that could be handy, but for the most part were distracting and confusing. Live tiles were the Windows take on widgets where we could get a glance at information from the app without opening the app. The start screen was not well received by the Windows community. It was clear to Microsoft that the future of Windows lay beyond the keyboard and mouse, Touchscreens and mobile devices needed to be catered for, and the ill-fated Windows Phone was still on the table at the time. Windows 8 was striving to achieve a familiar interface across device platforms, but the market wasn't ready for the change. Major changes were rushed through in the Windows 8.1 update, but it wasn't to last. In Windows 10, we once again returned to the Windows 7-like taskbar format with the start menu on the left side, rather than the full screen. The full app list handily appeared on the left, the right side of the Windows Start menu was now for your favorite apps, websites, and folders. However, live tiles remained. And now, here we are in the middle with Windows 11. Tell us what you like and what you don't like about the Windows 11 Start menu below, and subscribe to our channel to go all the way to 11 with us.